My name is uh, Ivana Ivanova and I work at the Curtin, Univers at Curtin University, a special sciences discipline. Now, we used to be department, now we are a discipline. And my uh, role there is a senior lecturer in spatial infrastructures, in geographic information and all sorts of related things. Uh, my background is in spatial data quality and uh, for 19 years uh, or a little bit over uh, I'm dealing with standardization in all sorts of levels national international community and so forth so Ming asked me to introduce uh, the, the fundamental standardization bodies and their roles uh, for spatial data quality I'm not sure uh, what well, some of you for sure are dealing with spatial data but I think um, uh, not all of uh, all of you. Is that correct, Bing? In this group, we have non-spatial people as well. Probably for people come here today or <laughs> deal with the spatial. <laughs> oh. Okay, uh, never mind. So anyway, this talk is about standardization of spatial data quality, and we look at the two main bodies uh, uh, which drive this uh, space which is the OGC, Open Geospatial Consortium, and the Technical Committee at ISO. Uh, I'd like to start with introducing both groups and then see what are the synergies between the two. Uh, ISO TC211 is a technical committee that deals with standardization of all aspects of geographic information and geomatics. It has been established uh, in 1994 after a demise uh, of uh, a European Normalization Committee who started driving standardization in spatial data uh, or geographic information domain. Today, ISO has 38 participating members, uh, among which Australia, and 32 observing members. Uh, and uh, it has more than 40 internal and external liaisons, including uh, bodies such as the Open Geospatial Consortium and WCC, the two main organizations which deal with uh, geospatial web. Uh, the role of ISO TC211 is to produce uh, standards within the 1900 series and um, the, the, the overall uh, philosophy is to build these standards for a long time perspective and uh, that is also a reason that these standards are very, well most of them are quite abstract, you know, uh, offering the conceptual foundation in a specific aspect of geographic information rather than specific implementation instructions. Currently, we have 75 published standards and 25 standards under development. Uh, so that's, it's a quite a large body. Uh, they are uh, well, related, uh, some closer, some not so close, but uh, it, it's not meant to be implemented as a full, uh, full collection. Uh, standards can be selected individually uh, based on the needs of implementing organization. On this list, I've only uh, selected few interesting standards for us uh, well, in, in this group and those that relate to data quality. Some uh, are specifically defining data quality and its, uh, and its uh, model and aspects and some are defining additional quality elements of, uh, and those are the standards for data quality and the metadata. Uh, in Australia and within uh, uh, organizations dealing with spatial data, uh, standards for metadata are well known and uh, most organizations implement them in full or in, uh, as, a, as a profile of these standards. I'm not sure about the data quality standards. Uh, they are implemented uh, indirectly most of the time as part of the metadata implementation, but uh, I haven't seen a full implementation of data quality so far, but that may be only me. Uh, the model of spatial data quality as defined in ISO series of standards is as following. The data quality is expressed through data quality elements, uh, a long list of uh, elements and their sub-elements, which can be quantified or at least uh, or qualified, some of them. These elements relate to a data quality scope, which relates to the data set scope. So if uh, part of the data set uh, is, uh, has data quality evaluated, that's possible within ISO standards. And these data quality elements are typically reported in metadata and uh, some uh, are reported, those that are directly or indirectly evaluated are reported also in more detailed data quality evaluation reports. Uh, those elements currently present in standards are the following. So these are the five uh, 
well, notoriously known in spatial data quality domain, uh, completeness, logical consistency, temporal quality, thematic accuracy, and positional accuracy or spatial accuracy. And one additional element, which is fairly new from 2013, it, which is called data quality usability element. Uh, and this set is very likely to change uh, shortly, or well, shortly, within few coming few years, but I'll conclude my talk with more detail on that. The other defining organization for our standardization is the Open Geospatial Consortium, which is, uh, well, uh, contrary to uh, ISO TC211, which is a formal standardization body producing so-called de jure standards. Uh, OGC produces de facto standards, which are uh, those that are driven by the needs of industry and immediate needs of industry. So these are very technical and implementation, or usually uh, implementation specifications. As you can see from the new definition of OGC, the, uh, this organization strives at uh, producing the geo web and services in a fair way. And that's the concept uh, many of you might have encountered in recent years. It stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. That didn't used to be. Well, fair wasn't a, a word or was, wasn't a thing a few years back, so it wasn't at OGC as well, but uh, the organization is picking up the, the, gen, the general approach to um, fair uh, data science, if we can say that, and they changed their mission into uh, paying specific attention to that aspect as well. OGC standards, there are two main standards, which are abstract specification and implementation specification. And because of the very close liaison uh, between OGC and ISO, abstract specifications are uh, typically equivalent to ISO conceptual uh, schema. So for instance, a standard for feature geometry features as defined or the main object uh, uh, of real world object that is standardized at OGC is specified equally as is in spatial schema by, by ISO. Uh, several implement spec uh, spec implementation specifications exist. Here are just a few examples which might be familiar to you. There are two other interesting documents at OGC's website which are worth to follow. And these are the in engineering reports which report uh, results of the innovation program where new standards are developed or existing standards are implemented and also discussion papers, which uh, normally bring uh, topics which are hot outside spatial data domain and try to actually uh, see uh, what that means in spatial data domain. So one example is the uh, discussion paper on, on CERT ML, which was a proposal to define uh, metrics to uh, mark up uh, uncertainty measures as an expression of uh, spatial variation uh, in objects. Now, here in this graph, I'm not going to go into detail, just to, to, but wanted to include that in slides to show you the synergies between various organizations and in standardization. So you can see there are different types of liaisons between these. And class A liaison between OGC and ISO means, ISO TC211 means that whatever topic is standardized within ISO to TC211 is not going to be redundantly standardized at OGC, but OGC adopts that standard within their set and other way around. So for instance, standards and specifications uh, such as web map service, web feature service have been defined by the OGC and adopted within the set of ISO 1900 series. This is interesting uh, for one other reason, because OGC strives at producing open standards, uh, whereas ISO uh, produces well, standards which are uh, conceptually open, but they cost a lot of money. So if you actually are after a standard for web map service or web other service, then uh, it's uh, wiser to actually uh, have a look at the OGC's website and uh, download it from there, because the content is, exact, is exactly the same. Uh, at OGC, we have, uh, there are several standards working groups and domain working groups where standards working groups are set up ad hoc uh, when a new request for a new standard is, uh, is there and uh, members join efforts in producing that standard. And then there are domain working groups which uh, aim at facilitating 
work of these standards group or other groups uh, in certain topics. So one of the topics which is uh, uh, which has a domain working group is the data quality. Now what we mean here is spatial data quality, but also quality of service and quality a bit more general, so not really spatial data driven. Uh, so this group has been established in 2006 and one of the first tasks was, or one of the first uh, uh, programs of work or items on program of work was to learn what data quality means to various stakeholders in geospatial supply chain. So all sorts of bodies involved in production or consumption of spatial data. In this survey, we had quite a lot of responses, uh, more than 700 from a wide range of organizations. Uh, and interestingly, only 17% of these were members at the time. So this was really a, a wide uh, view from outside organizations. And uh, most of them were both suppliers and consumers of spatial data. A result in summary was that almost everybody stated that data quality is important, but uh, well, close to, I don't want to say close to nobody because just 60%, but 60% is a large number uh, uh, indicating that they have no idea how to manage these data. Now, you might think that since 2008, this well, must have changed, but uh, well, I'm not so optimistic. So I think if we would do the benchmark here, the, the, the percentage would slightly uh, maybe even rise. Well, I think it's very similar today. Now, at OGC, uh, when it was established and as a result of this survey, the mission, main mission was to actually help uh, provide guidance in implementing well, quality control in organizations. So there were uh, data quality standards at the time with different numbers, but also defining the, 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 the element, the fundamental set of elements such as accuracy, consistency, and integrity. And this group uh, aimed at helping implement their organizations to actually establish quality evaluation routines in their, in their process workflows. And one of the first deliverables was exactly related to that, and that was topological quality assessment uh, guidance. Today, Data Quality Domain Working Group has uh, around 40 members, 41 members. I didn't check today, but uh, more or less. Uh, we are with three co-chairs, two based in Europe and uh, one based in Australia. Uh, and uh, what we are interested in today is that uh, we, we'd like to understand what, well, in more detail what quality means uh, for producers and consumers of spatial data. So you can see that from since 2008, the interest, the core interest didn't change because it's uh, up until today, there is no agreement uh, within these two e extremes on the supply chain. So it's not so sure that producers understand what users mean and uh, other way around. Then uh, we'd like to see what are the limitations in use of data quality information, and that's the these are the activities related to to um, evaluating constantly evaluating the applicability of existing standards for producers, so such as the, the current data quality standard. Is it possible? Is it easy uh, to implement? Where are the problems? What needs to be changed? And we also like to know um, how to manage or how to how to deal with the quality of non-authoritative uh, spatial data resources and those are the typically uh, coming from citizens volunteers so which is the, the type of spatial data and the spatial resource increasingly common and increasingly uh, being adopted and combined with authoritative data and but both of these resources have very different notion of spatial data quality what, how we work, uh, we, we usually meet at quarterly OGC technical meetings in person or online. And then uh, uh, part of that is well, the objective of those meetings are discussions. So we have several presentations and then group discussions about uh, selected aspects of data quality. And um, uh, what we also do, we commonly do reviews and um, mainly of existing standards. So for instance, in 2010, the group has reviewed uh, both the metadata uh, standard and the data quality standard. And we do internal reviews before engineering reports are published at OGC and those reviews, those reports that relate to direct, directly to data quality or their aspects. And at this moment, the data quality is now 
indirectly involved in revision of uh, ISO 19157. What does indirectly mean? That is, um, we don't have, in the revision process, we don't have a, a data quality domain working group at OGC participating as a, as a well, in the project, but we have uh, project members nominated through standards bodies who are also members of data quality domain working group. So. Uh, let me just conclude this talk with a uh, few information uh, uh, about uh, revision of 19157. Uh, so that's the data quality standard. Currently, we have uh, well three uh, parts of that standard: one amendment and one implementation. And they, uh, the so part of the revision is to join these and then also update its content. So there is a new project at ISO since July 2019 and it aims at producing a new standard called data quality part one general requirements so which defines the fundamental concepts for data quality for geographic information. Now this uh, well there are two project leaders myself nominated by Standards Australia and, and my colleague from Swedish Standards Institute and we have a support with uh, from 227 experts nominated by respective standards organizations, among which some of them are also members of the OGC. The timeline is uh, uh, as outlined and the standard uh, should be ready in June 2020. And uh, well, the, the one interesting thing to say is that this, the revision has been proposed despite the fact that all national, well, most national standards bodies during systematic review confirmed the standard as is. There have been only three objections or suggestions for revision but with the argument so strong that the that ISO's technical committee decided uh, what they would normally not do if 19 members approve and just three object they would not propose the revision but those arguments in those three uh, comments uh, were so strong that the standards has been proposed for uh, for revision uh, despite it's being confirmed by the majority and uh, I think this is a good thing because standard, as it appears, uh, is still not that straightforward to implement, and there are many, uh, many uncertain things uh, in, um, in in its definition, and it requires another look. Uh, and I think that was all from myself. Thank you for your attention, and if there are any questions, then feel free.